Hello and welcome to my new video. On June the 13th, Rheinbetal and KMW Next Up presented two new concepts of main battle tanks on the Eurosatori Arms Expo. Both combined two features in one vehicle that weren't present before, four crew members and the autoloader. Normally it was a decision to have a three-man crew and an autoloader like with T-72, K2 Black Panther or the French Leclerc or a crew of four with a human loader like with Leopard 2, M1 Abrams or other tanks. But now we see both features in one vehicle and more important a complete new system that can improve the awareness and the survivability of a tank. I'm doing this video not as an arms expert but as a tanker. Please keep that in mind, most is my personal opinion. I go into details that peeked into my eyes directly when I saw the pictures and how I think about them as a tanker. Many of these things look like great steps forward in the development. I served on Leopard 2 and will give you some insights about what I think by the current public available pictures judging by my experience. First we will take a look at the new model of Rheinmetall. It's called the KF-51 Panther. It's equipped with a 130mm smoothbore gun from Rheinmetall and it's crewed by 3 or 4 persons. The fourth person, a system operator, sits in the hull. His place is additional and not mandatory. He can operate for example the UAV of the K-51. I will go deeper into detail why a UAV is a great addition to a MBT later with the tank of KMW and Nexter. But now look into the detail. The commander sits on the left side and the gunner on the right side. You can see it on the turret behind the main gun side. On Leopard 2 there is a ring of periscopes that gives the commander a view around his tank. However on the Panther they are missing and replaced by cameras. But if you look at the loader side or the former loader size of Leopard 2, you can see that these periscopes are present there now. That indicates that the commander sitting on the left side has additionally cameras pointing to the right and the gunner is sitting where the commander was before. A remote weapon station is visible behind the commander set. The hull seems to be a modified Leopard 2A4 hull. Now what's interesting is that in the hull, Rheinmetall still used the old driver hatch system like it is present on Leopard 2A4. KMW used a new better protected version of the driver's hatch. A driver camera is visible in front of the hull. Let's take a look at the picture with a visible hatch open on the commander side. Note that the hatch appears to be roughly square formed and not round. It's folded up to the side. A very unusual thing compared to a standard Leopard systems of turning the hatch to the back or the Swedish system of having them moving back. The system would give the commander a huge disadvantage while commanding the tank with the open head, since he has a giant blind spot and has completely to rely on the cameras on this side. The coaxial machine gun looks like it isn't Rheinmetall's MG3 or any similar system. The muzzle brake shows similarities to machine guns in the caliber of 50. A 50 call would be a great addition to a modern tank. Since many soft targets like cars and trucks outside of the 762 range are supposed to be engaged with the main gun. Now with the new expensive high explosive rounds this would be a waste of money since every round contains electric components and in case of the new German high explosive round also tungsten balls. A short burst of a 50 is enough for these kind of targets. Now take a quick look at KMW and Nexus approach to a new main little tank. The EMBT. KMW and Nexter both showed their concept of a Leclerc turret on a Leopard hull already some years ago. So the concept isn't really new. But what is new is this year the system has the concept of using four crewmen inside the tank. Since Leclerc is equipped with an autoloader, the fourth crewman is not a loader. He is also a system operator and sits next to the driver in a similar way like we know from older World War II tanks. With this the unprotected hull armor that caused catastrophic explosions on Turkish Leopards in Syria is removed. No main gun ammunition should be left inside the crew compartment. That makes operating this tank way safer compared to current Leopard 2 variants. EMBT is also equipped with APU like Leopard 2A7 from KMW. What's also new on this year's version is a new hatch on the right hand side of the hull. The function is currently unknown to the public. This hatch is not present on KMW's Leopard 2A7V. On the other side is the air conditioning for the crew. Maybe it's possible that this is the NBC protection system. Since the NBC protection system went during the upgrade from A7 to A7V into the turret. Placing it there would mean that the fuel capacity is lowered significant. Since there is the bigger of the two fuel tanks of Leopard 2. 
It's not open to the public if the tank receives the new tank on a different position or the range will be lowered compared to other models. But now let's take a look at the new crew member. The system operator. The system operator operates the remote weapon station, a new UAV and the BMS, the battle management system. This takes a lot of work away from the commander, since he can focus himself now more on the combat, on scouting targets and to overwatch the combat of his and the neighboring tank. Sometimes in the heat of the moment during a firefight it's simply not possible to take your eye away from the enemy, to use a computer in place or remove icons on it. I saw approaches on Leopard 2A7 that the loader in this case also received a BMS system. But also the loader has to take care of the main gun and the machine gun during a combat situation. Another very interesting part is the UAV. The UAV makes the tank's survivability in the most dangerous situations way higher. Like driving through a curve inside the urban area or a forested area that is not visible from the beginning. That could lead to driving straight into a trap, an ambush or a duel situation with enemy tanks or weapon systems on a very short distance. With this UAV you can send the UAV around the curve before you and your tank will go around. This will show you if there are any enemy presences before you risk your life. The other important situation is driving over a hill or standing in a position behind the hill. Normally you, you never want to drive over a hill, but sometimes you have to. In that case, it's a very slow approach. To minimize the risk, you go optic by optic, so you don't present much of your tank to the enemy. First the commander looks with his binoculars, then he looks with his periscope, and then the gunner looks with his optics. All steps come when the previous step didn't show any enemy presence. With a UAV, you could just send your UAV without exposing anything of your tank. The third situation will be ambushes by infantry with anti-tank weapons that can hide in roadside ditches or behind small hills. With a high-flying UAV, those could be spotted before the tank drives into their effective combat range and could also engage them with high explosive time-fused round. Also the EMBT is equipped with an anti-UAV capability, a remote weapon station that features airburst ammunition. We saw in the Ukraine conflict and in the Armenian-Azerbaijan war that many tanks got destroyed or damaged by simple UAVs. This danger will be removed even without the presence of a specialized anti-air vehicle now. Again, this shows the adaption of current combat situations. The tank is like most of the new MBTs equipped with an APS system. In this case, it's Trophy. Also this tank features an acoustic gunshot detector that makes it possible to find and return fire to ambushes or sniper more easy. Such systems were already tested on Humvees in several situations and conditions. The 360 degree situation awareness system should cover any blind spot that is existing on previous MBTs like the Leopard 2. Same as with the Leopard 2A7 and the following variants, it appears that the EMBT is equipped with Spectre system, a driver camera. The coaxial weapon is a machine gun in the caliber of 50, with 680 rounds. The main gun is a 120mm smoothbore gun with a caliber length of 52. The remote weapon station features a 30mm and the commander's periscope has a 7.62 machine gun. Also the tank features a 80mm grenade launcher that can fire smoke and AP. The engine power is stated with 1500 horsepower at around 62 tons, so this tank should be very similar like Leopard 2A7V. Note that we don't know much about these vehicles yet. This is just speculation by my experience on the Leopard 2. We will see probably more information especially about the 130mm gun and its ammunitions later. All in all both systems look very promising and I can't wait to get more information about both of them. From what I saw I like the idea of having an autoloader and a fourth proof member. Having a UAV can increase the survivability a lot since not getting shot at the first place by any ambush or enemy in a position is better than to have the best armor in the world. The workload is better shared, everyone can focus on his job and the tank has a better situation awareness overall. Even during maintenance or while camouflaging is the fourth crew member a big help. Both vehicles use the no empty space of the hull armor pretty well. Already existing structures, companies and even crews could stay the same. Science on Leopard using the radius was part of the loader's job anyway and on A7 it was tested that the loader can operate the BMS, it should be no problem to give this job to an enlisted man. Gunner and loader are currently in the German army an interchangeable position. I think 
If this will stay, the crew training will be more specialized and longer, since the BMS requires itself a training and using the remote weapon station and the UAV as well. Both systems will compete over the future, and I think both tanks will see further modifications. Be aware that also other new systems and tanks got shown there. For example, an interesting version of Leopard 1. But I won't go into detail about them yet, since I'm more focused on this new Leopard 2 variants. That's all for today's video. Thank you for turning in, and I hope you liked what I said.